Now back to Kenya, whereby the Kenya national budget is pegged on a rosy growth focus of about 5.8% this year, up from 4.7% last year. But there are very many dark clouds ahead. Now the World Bank is less optimistic and says Kenya may grow at a rate of 5% this year due to thinning international commodity prices and tightening global liquidity. Now it is a delicate balancing act of the national treasury to mobilize resources without hurting the macroeconomic environment. Now for this, we'll, we'll continue with the discussion with Alika Sachi, the CEO of Rich Management, and Nikhil Hira, he is a director at uh, Deloitte East Africa. Now, let's look at economic growth. Of course, it anchors revenue collection. Are we likely to get that 5.8% growth in light of everything that is happening at the moment? In short, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't see it. I, I, I think uh, with, the, with the rising insecurity, uh, with, as you mentioned, uh, global commodity prices uh, uh, sort of going down, uh, all our major exports are affected by this. Oil prices going up, and uh, our imports are therefore affected. I, I really don't see us hitting 5.7. Uh, I, I think the World Bank 5% might be a little bit more realistic. Uh, and, and I think what we, but we, what we mustn't forget is that Kenya's private sector is extremely res resilient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, they've taken a number of knocks over the last 50 years since independence and come through them. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt they will come through them again. The only thing is that we need government policy that is focused a little bit more long term and a little let, less ambiguous than it currently is. Ali Khan, what's your input? Well, I, I think, you know, Nicholas making an important point and the president obviously is aware of that point because I think only last, last Friday he was having a sort of round table, CAPSA driven meeting, looking at this looking at how he improves Kenya's score on the, um, uh, on the do ease of doing business index. So he's clearly looking at that as well. I think coming back to your point about GDP, I just, I think even 5% is going to look a big call in particular. And I don't know what your feeling is. You know, the most bullish people uh, when you are, are those pe Africans on the ground, right? People doing business in Africa, if you look at all those indices. <laughs> My sense is that domestic investors have become a little bit more nervous and circumspect in the last couple of months because of insecurity. Mm. And I think that's not going to be something we can, there's no silver bullet to fix that straight away, as far as I can see, big increase in the budget allocation. Mm. But I think until we see a trend change in that, it's going to be very difficult for our GDP rate to poke its head above five even you know even five percent let's talk about view. the over reliance also on agriculture because 24 mm. percent of our gdp a quarter mm. percent of our gdp comes from agriculture at a time where we are facing of course erratic rainfall in as much as we have the government saying they're going to get into mm. irrigation schemes it is still a major challenge mm. because you cannot control the weather and yeah. you've not done much to help with irrigation schemes and commodity and we're at the prices. Most risk at, at yes. Weather, you know, the, the global warming seems to mm. be affecting this part of the world much more than anywhere else. Yes. But I, I think it was this man here mm. who said that when you're looking at the Kenyan economy, mm -hmm. you first got to look at the weather. <laughs> uh, and, and, and in fact, <laughs> rightly in so. Fact, rightly so. Yeah, um, and, and you're right. You know, <laughs> global warming is, is having its issue. But we have known this. We have known that every three years we have rainfall. Yes. Mm. Why are we not planning for it? That's what we need to do. We need to plan for short -term it. Short-term thinking, as you say. It's short-term thinking. You're talking about irrigation. This was announced four years ago, I remember, and it's still not happening. Uh, and yet, small-scale farming probably is the back, continues to be the backbone of this economy. And, and we've got, to, and then we bring in a VAT Act, which has probably completely destroyed small-scale mm -hmm. farming. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we've made their inputs taxable and their outputs exempt. Uh, if, if, you know, if we were going to do that, we should have just made the outputs taxable mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. At least there would have been a recovery of that 16% inputs. I know small-scale farmers are really struggling today because of mm -hmm. the weather and because of uh, uh, things like the VAT Act and, mm -hmm. and the short-term policy we have. As we wrap mm -hmm. up, what are your expectations? I know you'll be tabling at three. We have some of these proposals that have been set up, but we don't have the finer detail. In terms of your expectations, maybe, gentlemen, you can give us a highlight. I, I think what we're waiting for this afternoon, I, we, we know what the expenditure estimate is, we know what the revenue estimate is. The question is, how are you going to raise that revenue? So what are the tax measures that you're going to introduce or other measures that you're going to introduce to, to raise that revenue? What do I want to see? I want to see a widening of the tax bands. Mm -hmm. I want to see a lower rate of corporation tax for uh, the, the small to medium-sized enterprises, which is the engine of our growth for yeah. the future. 
I expect to see capital gains tax back on the table. Whether it gets passed or I not, I don't it know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll get tabled. It was introduced and shelved. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to comment on whether it gets yes. passed, but <laughs> it's there. Um, and and I, I, I expect to see some longer term policies uh, rather than thinking just about tomorrow. Ali Khan? Yeah, Beatrice, I'd like to see a better control on the recurrent expenditure because mm -hmm. I think the markets are clearly telling us that their patience has run out with countries that are not managing that well. Mm -hmm. I think on the revenue side, it's going to be tough this year. My observation is that, you know, capital is available at the moment to African sovereigns. You can see that from the Eurobond markets. But the key challenge is the money is the easy, getting the money is the easy part now. It's how you invest that money and don't, and don't waste it on just a recurrent expenditure. And, you know, when you look at our, at our projects, 30 billion more than that we really want to get done. We've got to increase the free cash flow mm -hmm. at a billion dollars top side. It doesn't, it cannot support this kind of uh, infrastructure spending. So we've got to work our way around that. And that's what I'm looking for. All right, many thanks for those uh, uh, insights and of course the analysis. And of course, we'll be keeping a keen eye on this. And later in the show, later in the day, we also have more analysis on the sectoral, sectoral approach, looking at devolution, county governments, and austerity measures that the government needs to take. Well, that yeah. was a special uh, in special bulletin looking at uh, the East African budgets, whereby we're expecting 1.8 trillion shillings in Kenya. In Tanzania, we're looking at 1. 1.9 trillion shillings. In Rwanda, we are looking at 1.7 trillion Rwandan franc. In Uganda, we have a figure of 14 trillion shillings.